Today, I have the great honor and privilege of being joined in conversation by storyteller, uh, journalist, and filmmaker uh, Yasin Juma. Many of you will be familiar uh, with Yasin Juma as he has been a longtime ally of the Oromo Nation, uh, an effort for which he has paid great sacrifice. Uh, as one member of the Oromo Nation, it is a great pleasure uh, to bring you this discussion today, a discussion that will explore the multifaceted nature of Yasin's contribution to the Oromo social uh, and political story. At NTV, we don't just cover the nation, we cover the region too. And that has been my preoccupation. In Somalia, I have witnessed first-hand the lawlessness of a failed state. The fighting here in Mogadishu may have been reduced to sporadic attacks. I have seen a president survive an assassination attempt and covered the fall of the Islamic Court Union and the rise of Al-Shabaab. This is the Moyale border post. He cracked the intricate web of human trafficking across Kenya's poorest border and followed the trade from Ethiopia to Southern Africa. In Southern Ethiopia, I ventured into rebel territory and brought to the screen never before seen images of the ragtag militia that is the OLF. The Nile will remain an important issue. Road in the tense waters of the Nile and witness the historic birth of a nation. Walk with me, Yasin Juma, as we break the boundaries to bring you the story that matters to the region. Hi, Yasin. Hi, how are you? I'm good. It's so mm. good to see you. Thank I'm, you for I'm being here. I'm honored to be here and nice to see you. Yasin, I, we're going to be having quite a diverse discussion today okay. and you're going to be sharing a number of stories with mm -hmm. us about your experiences in Ethiopia, about your current work. But I want to start with your arrest in Ethiopia after Hajj Alo's assassination uh, in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, you were arrested for about 60 days, mm -hmm. so it's about two months. Um, and according to a report that the citizen issued in August of 2020, you had attended up to five court hearings, uh, and after one of them, and perhaps even more of them, you were released, but immediately re-arrested, uh, and you remained arrested even after Ethiopia's Attorney General ordered your release. Yasin, why were you in the country uh, at the time? Let's start there, and okay. then we'll talk a little bit oh, about okay. the logistics or the, the details uh -huh. of your arrest, okay. re-arrest. Uh, so we start in the deep waters. We're starting in the deep <laughs> waters, and then we're going to go even deeper. So Okay, Any, anyway, it's an honor. And I'd say this is my first uh, like proper interview since my release. It's uh, almost uh, two years now. But uh, yeah, this is my like proper interview. Which is a great uh, pleasure to be to yeah. be the platform hosting. Uh, you for I haven't that. talked much because I needed time to you know um, uh, dissolve everything that I'd gone through, and uh, I was also undergoing uh, physiotherapy, so I was um, I was told also not to at that at that time not to talk much of uh, what I'd uh, gone through. So uh, it's a pleasure now that I'm, uh, you know, I'm in a position to, to be able to talk about uh, my experiences in, in uh, the Ethiopian jail and, uh, and everything that is around that, mm -hmm. uh, my incarceration. Mm -hmm. So you asked me uh, what was I doing in Ethiopia or what was on my mission in Ethiopia. Yeah. When um, the new regime uh, took over, Abiy Ahmed, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's uh, administration took over. There was this uh, uh, change, you know, that uh, was being experienced by not only Ethiopians but also across the region in East Africa. Mm. So uh, we had uh, groups like uh, ONLF in, in, in uh, the Somali region been delisted as a, as, a, as, as a terror group. Mm -hmm. We had also OLF um, in the Oromia, in, in, in Oromia, and other groups, mm -hmm. you see. So the, we were seeing changes across the border, uh, me being in, in, in Kenya. So all these changes and a new prime minister, and uh, you know, in, in, in a few uh, months he, was, he had already 
won the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of change happening, and you know, this OLF uh, rebels were coming back from Ethiopia, from Eritrea, going back to you know. Mm -hmm. That uh, mm -hmm. that momentum also had me thinking, and I said, hey, maybe it's uh, you know after. Uh, many years I think it's time for me to to go to Ethiopia mm. and this is a beautiful story this is something that uh, Africa needs to know that is happening I wanted to capture that uh, moment the changes that were happening was happening in, in Ethiopia mm. so that is the reason why I decided mm. to go to Ethiopia mm. and uh, you know I had been, been I had been banned by the previous uh, regime mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Ethiopia mm -hmm. because of um, the documentary that I did in 2009, uh, the Inside the Rebel Territory, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so this was an opportunity. If if uh, if those that I had covered that were going back and actually um, sitting down on the same table and, and talking to to the government, I think it was time for me to also follow up and see. Hey, this is right. a good story for Africa. Right. As an African journalist, I've always believed in uh, you know doing stories uh, about um, you know covering stories as an, as an Africa. I always look to, towards uh, doing uh, positive stories mm. about Africa. Mm. This was uh, one of them. So I decided, let me go. Uh, to Ethiopia and see how it is because um, I believed that my ban had been uh, my 2009 ban had been lifted. Yeah. So I was I was uh, I was based in Mogadishu and uh, and and um, Nairobi. Uh, I was operating my company Horn 24 mm -hmm. uh, Media. So I thought it would also be a good chance to see how you know. Uh, um, how, how the situation is in Addis Ababa, if I can, you know, open a branch in, 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 in Addis mm. Ababa and, you know, continue to do what I used to do in, in, in Mogadishu, which was to do stories for international media, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Sky TV and, uh, and uh, CNN and Al Jazeera. I thought this was, uh, would be a good chance. But the first reason was to go and see and get to, uh, to size up just how things are on the ground and you know do something a story and you know tell the whole world what's happening in in in, in uh, Ethiopia do, and this this think, was to be part of a, of a, also a documentary that I was doing a return to Ethiopia so yeah. that, that would be part of my 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 documentary me going back to Ethiopia after my ban uh, uh, I was assuming was was lifted let me ask you, Yasin, do, do you think that you working on this documentary, are you trying to tell this story given your history uh, of reporting on Ethiopia, particularly that 2009 documentary, do you think it had anything to do with your arrest? Uh, not really at the, uh, at the start. I would say maybe later on because mm -hmm. I, I think that whoever arrested me, I don't think he knew who I was. Mm -hmm. I, I just happened to be where... Uh, they didn't, I have to be clear, I was not targeted. Mm. I wasn't, uh, mm. uh, if, you, if, if you look properly at, at my story, maybe it would have been uh, um, like, uh, like what the Attorney General said in his, in, in, in mm -hmm. his press conference. It was more of a communication breakdown, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. But uh, it took time for them to realize mm -hmm. that. But uh, I think with the time also, they, you know, when they, maybe they got information that I was, I was the guy who did the, the, the story about uh, the rebels, maybe that, you know, added to, to me being incarcerated for long. But I, I, it's, it's not really clear yeah. that, but in, in the beginning, I was arrested because I was found at uh, at um, uh, Jawar Mohammed's house mm -hmm. and I'd gone there to do interviews mm -hmm. because uh, the story was out that he had been arrested. Mm -hmm. I needed to know what uh, what was the reaction of the family. Mm -hmm. So I was there to you know get interviews and uh, get to know what uh, was happening. And and you mentioned that after your release that you had gone through physiotherapy. Um, how are you now, physically, mentally, emotionally? It's been no, some I'm, years. I'm doing great. Uh, I really have to thank uh, the sister from uh, South Carolina who really assisted me and uh, sister Nima who provided for the uh, uh, physiotherapist. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm, I'm doing fine. But uh, in the, in the first like six months, when the, the exact data was released, uh, 
you know, because when you're in jail, mm. uh, the, uh, the activity, the, the, um, the activity that you usually do is, would be, you know, pissing, mm. pissing mm. In, the, mm. in, the, in, the, in the cell. Mm -hmm. So I used to do that even after I was released. Mm -hmm. So kind it of took it time happen. before, I, yeah. And uh, when I'm sleeping, you know, sometimes you, you always hear the, because at 7.38, they, you, usually they would lock up uh, your, your cell. So that, that sound of uh, the locking up, sometimes, you know, it, it, uh, it remains there and then it affects you. But I'm, I'm coping up. Uh, I'm coping up. I'm, do, I'm, I'm doing fine r right now. It's been two years. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say I'm, I'm okay. Mm. Although, you know, that, is, uh, th that came after I already had uh, undergone PTSD because I've been covering uh, conflict in the region for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is my 18th year as a journalist, mm -hmm. but mostly I cover the conflict, especially in Somalia and, and Sudan. So I went, I underwent uh, 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 PTSD uh, for, for, for quite some time. Uh, um, it, 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 it had been tough for me, but uh, you know. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you are doing better as yeah. much as one can after that kind of an experience. I mean, like you said, you've, you have enormous experience in covering conflict mm -hmm. um, in the region, but I think this was your first arrest. Uh, in covering a story or in your line of work, or have you been arrested before in another, another country? No, this is not, uh, maybe out of the country, but this this is not um, my first time being arrested. I've been arrested here in Kenya, mm. uh, yeah, just uh, because of doing what um, I, I do. Let me ask you one more question on this, uh, on this project you were working on uh, in Ethiopia, the documentary where you were trying to trace, I guess, your movements in coming back to the country after 2009. Mm -hmm. Any chance we're going to see that documentary anytime soon, or it's a project that was kind of put to rest after uh, you came? I wish I would uh, do something about, it, but uh, you know, when uh, when we were arrested, they t they took everything. I had mm -hmm. all my uh, uh, all my cards, memory cards, and all. This. So I, I I lost a lot of uh, footage mm -hmm. that I would have gone to, but. I, I still believe I can do something around uh, around it. Mm -hmm. It was a good experience for me, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was a good experience for me going back to to Ethiopia. And uh, I, I still believe I may have lost uh, the footage and all that, but uh, I still believe I can. It's part of what I'm 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 actually writing because after my release, I went into in, into writing. Uh, a biography, just my experience, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Just my experience with the with the Oromo people, mm. and my experience covering the Horn mm. uh, Horn of Africa uh, region. My experience as a journalist and uh, as a war correspondent here in 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 in, 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 in the region. Mm. So yeah, so so you uh, use bits and pieces of that store of of that exactly. experience and yeah, these. Yeah. And, and I also have every. I used to write every day when I was in jail. Every day I used to write my experiences, my experience in jail. So um, I have uh, you know small uh, pieces of papers. I used to like. I had to buy them <laughs> to get a piece of paper and 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 and, and a pen in jail and write every day's experience mm. uh, of um, uh, what life is to be in an Ethiopian jail. So I have all this uh, documented mm. just from morning to evening, how I used to talk to my cellmates like Iskandar, Jawar and Bakala and just all these experiences and the food there, you know, mm. my relation with other cellmates, mm. you know. Because mm. you were, I, 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 I documented the, all that. Yeah, you just reminded me of something. You know, when you had uh, been released, I think one of the first times that we spoke, you said that there was, and I'm just struggling to remember who it was, but there was a political prisoner who I think is still in prison now, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Dejene, uh, Dejene that had given you a message, or someone who had tried to communicate with you as you were as you were leaving the prison? You were arrested amongst other Oromo political prisoners, correct? Yes, so uh, um, actually, no, I was arrested with the, um, I mean, where I was uh, jailed or? Yeah, yeah, the, the... Yes, I was, my, my cell was, uh, was between Bakala's uh, cell mm -hmm. and uh, Jawar's cell. Mm -hmm. So if I hit the, 
the wall I would Jawar would know I want to speak to him mm-hmm. you see mm-hmm. then uh, that's basically how I used to communicate with him because mm-hmm. I think I had issues with the food and all that and uh, Jawar and Iskandar used to like uh organize what food I would I would eat or mm-hmm. if they had somebody from outside they would um, they would be kind enough to say hey this guy is uh, suffering from all this in uh, jail in jera I, I, you know i I'm, i'm not a fan of shiro so <laughs> and every day we had to eat shiro so, so that, did you get that, that, that was that was just too much for me yeah okay so they used to i really like wanted some rice or different food so or uh, yeah just something different in the morning maybe dabo and inkulal something like that but you never get to see that it's injera and shiro and that's like <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, so yeah i used to we used to all of us but when they were uh, when they were transferred elsewhere yeah what's what's the name of that thing? the president was transferred is it uh, what factory is it in kulal factory or something like that they went to another in fabrica fabrica mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. so when they went there mm-hmm. uh, they were replaced by uh, some tigrian top uh, top uh, army and police like the top mm-hmm. top army and police guys who were so we were close with them we would like you know play sox foot, football with them and yeah interesting yeah. interesting mm-hmm. um let, let's let's move on and, mm-hmm. and talk a little bit about your work in 2009 mm-hmm. you had done this story called inside rebel territory mm-hmm. um and it was a story on the or- oromo liberation front oromo liberation army mm-hmm. um and i think you were actually the first journalist to ever be let onto the front lines i think um I want to know why drew the story at that time and what compelled you and is there anything about that experience years on that still sticks with you? Okay. Okay. Now my interest in in uh, that would take me back to my interest with the Oromo community how I I got to know the Oromo people and 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 all that. But I think before before I go to that um, before I answer you uh, that question you had asked uh, one I, I need to be clear on on why I went to Ethiopia I'd f- uh, I'd, uh, I'd uh, not talked about uh, one of the projects that I was doing with a uh, with a with, oh, the, the, with the government uh, yeah with mm-hmm. the government run uh, government run broadcasting corporation OBN mm-hmm. uh, so OBN uh, had requested um, they had come to they had asked if I could be a director there mm-hmm. and but uh, I thought I had a lot of stuff to do for my own own 24 media mm. so we had an agreement that I would do a documentary mm-hmm. for OBN mm-hmm. and as I think over whether I would become a director there on on on, on not So we had an agreement to do a, a documentary about e-learning. Mm-hmm. So all this stuff I was talking in the in the jail. I mean in the in the courts what what e-learning it really so it was really tormenting trying to make the judge understand that hey you guys I'm I'm here because I'm 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 doing a documentary for a government uh, run uh, mm-hmm. run uh, broadcasting mm-hmm. about e-learning mm-hmm. so it's i don't know it's uh, maybe they were lost in the translation and uh, they thought oh ah, this guy is some i don't know some some tech guy who is uh, totally there's a lot yeah because, uh, i think we'll, we'll talk i don't know uh, we'll talk more on on the charges that I was facing so maybe that would be your uh, question okay so so What, what what were i mean when you were being re arrested uh so we're, we're we're back in the conversation about your arrest now mm-hmm. when you were being re arrested were you being told anything by the people re arresting you after you were being uh, released or acquitted in court because mm. you had been acquitted in the court yeah, a was, number of times yes i, I was acquitted so why uh, what was the explanation the, with the with the omn driver uh, uh, ipsa and uh, um you know I, i knew i was uh, i mean uh, i was found not guilty so yeah the charges that i was facing was that um, there were really serious charges um one of them was that uh, 
some, uh, the, uh, but sometimes the charges are just laughable. But anyway, so I, what I, were they? Describe what were they? I was, I, was, I was told that I was involved in killing a, uh, an Oromo police officer uh -huh. and at the Oromo Cultural Center uh -huh. at a time when I wasn't even near that place. Mm -hmm. All these charges were the charges that uh, Jawar and the bodyguards were facing. Mm -hmm. So all the, all the charges uh, they were facing, I was facing them too. Right. So the second charge was that I had organized um, protest in in uh, in Finfine mm -hmm. and after after the death of um, Hachalu mm -hmm. yeah so yeah basically it was around that the, the killing of the of the of the Oromo police uh, the, ch the same charges that Jawar was facing I was facing them and uh, you know and, and, and organizing the protest and I was supposed to, I don't know, they, they, they told me the, the course was like 54 million beer. I was, you know. Did you have, were you allowed legal representation in these in the cases? Yeah, the, um, the, the, the embassy, the Kenyan embassy, uh, although they came a bit late, uh, they came and uh, told me to, if uh, I would need uh, representation, but uh, I told them uh, at that time, the Oromo community had already mm -hmm. come up uh, and uh, organized for my legal representation mm -hmm. because uh, I was inside and I had no help, uh, no assistance at all. I didn't know what's, what was happening outside uh, the jail or what's happening to my family and all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, the Oromo community came up and, uh, you know, That's really assisted. good to hear. That's yeah. really good to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, again, when you were being rearrested, mm -hmm. can you okay. talk me through a little bit about okay. what were you okay. being told? Okay. Uh, so. I was released here. Mm -hmm. We had come from from uh, from the high court, mm -hmm. and the Addis High Court. So I was, we, uh, you know, the protocol is that you go back to uh, to where you are jailed mm -hmm. and sign out. So I, I was taken back to Sostinia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I said bye to everyone. We had like a small celebration, and everyone knew, okay, you are gonna be out now. Hey. Just take care, you know, mm. what happens in Ethiopia is that everyone, it's something that doesn't happen in Kenya. They, they use congratulations for when you are released from them. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's a culture that is new here. I, I, I've never seen that. So they, there's that congratulation and all that. So together with um, uh, IPSA and uh, the OMN uh, director, mm -hmm. uh, I mean editor, and... Uh, and one of uh, Jawar's uh, in-laws, Hassan. So we were released, we were found uh, not guilty. So as I was moving out after signing out mm -hmm. from Sostinia. Mm -hmm. Remember, in, uh, under Sos uh, it, uh, those who arrested me were the federal police, mm -hmm. you understand me? Mm -hmm. so, so we've been released by the federal police. We, we signed out and, uh, you know, and you're leaving actually, the yeah, and I had a serious headache. I, I didn't know I had already contracted uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. So I had a serious headache and uh, I asked one police officer if he knows any shop nearby where I can, you know, buy some painkillers because the headache was just too much for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Before I, you know, I, I go and look for a taxi and, you know, go sleep in downtown uh, so you're on your way I to pick up this yeah, medication. As I organized to go to Shashamane because I used to stay in uh, Shashamane. So yeah, um, so as I was, uh, as I was looking for the shop, the the, th the three of us as we were moving, you know, uh, and uh, moving towards uh, uh, um, the 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 mm -hmm. main road. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just four guys. Uh, not uniform, just came from Hanoi and uh, yeah, they forced us into a vehicle. So Ipsa was protesting, uh, but, it, uh, but they hit him. Mm -hmm. I started protesting also, then they hit me mm -hmm. uh, on the ribs. I, I was injured in the ribs. And yeah, we. Civilian clothing? Yeah, they were in no. civilian clo uh, clothing, but they didn't uh, identify themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and you were given so no explanation, the three of you were given no explanation. Yeah, and this is in front of Sostinia police station. Mm -hmm. This was happening, no, nothing, just, they just dumped us into, um, uh, into a, uh, I don't know how you call it, the, 
like a matatu. I see, yeah, yeah. 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 So they put us inside there and uh, took us around like five times around <laughs> Sostinia. Mm -hmm. So I just realized that uh, these are police policemen. I see, yeah, I see. And uh, we, we have been rearrested. So basically why they are doing that is just to uh, transfer us to now the Addis police police because they want us to be in, in custody for as long as time as they can because they couldn't be, we were, we were found not guilty. So they were to open new charges mm -hmm. under the Addis mm -hmm. police. police. The, you know, the federal police uh, case had been dropped now. The, it was a new uh, yeah, yeah, and were, were they the same charges in Addis, or they came so up they, with completely? Um, no, they had dropped about. Uh, they had dropped the charges on me about uh, of uh, killing the the Oromo mm -hmm. police, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, killing Oromo police and uh, organizing the protest. Mm -hmm. Now there were new charges. Um, so the new charges were that um, they came with something very. The new charges were that uh, um, the e-learning uh, mm -hmm. documentary that uh, that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So they, I think they assumed maybe I was uh, I was uh, spying for very ridiculous uh, okay. <laughs> charges. I was spying for Egypt or stuff okay. like that because I was trying to explain to them what e-learning is. Okay. I don't know. If they maybe they didn't understand what e-learning is, okay. which was actually a government. Uh, but uh, uh, project, not even my project, I was just only covering. So mm. e-learning involves installing uh, uh, installing internet in these uh, schools all over Oromia. Mm -hmm. So we had gone around o Oromo from Jima all the way to Harange and mm -hmm. we were doing all that. My work was to cover. I'm not, I'm not a, a tech, so I, did, I, don't, I don't know how. Oh, but the, the assumption was because you were working on some kind of tech-based project mm -hmm. that perhaps this had, some, you know, you were using this yeah. software yeah. to... No, they had to look for that so that, no, the reason why they did that was to have me behind Jade for us. Of course, for of course. For the longest Fab time fa they Fabrication, could. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they had no, I mean, they had no... But this is what the story looked like. There yeah. was this connection being made mm -hmm. uh, between e-learning and, I guess, spy software. But yeah. and the second time, and this will come to the conclusion. I know there's so much you could probably say about your time in prison, mm -hmm. and perhaps there is a whole interview that we should be just doing yeah, yeah. about that in particular. My experience but, in but the, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to. It was your second time uh, after your rearrest that you contracted COVID. Uh, and but I realized that I had contracted had COVID because you, I told you when I was going out, I was... You were quite uh, sick, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, you had so suffered. So, when you were in prison for that second installment, mm -hmm. you were actually sick with COVID in yeah, that I time. Yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. Remember... The, uh, very sick, actually. Yeah. But they used to, uh, like, test us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, the, you know, that that was a time when COVID was new and, uh, you mm. know, yeah, uh, so Stinia, Sostinia police, but that was after we protested, mm -hmm. and this was my first protest in Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It was not before prison. It was while you were in prison yeah, that well, you. Yeah, I had to protest, and we had these lines in. in uh, we, I had to cram these lines in in, in Amharic, and I can't remember too bad. But I, I, I wrote that. It's part of my story. I, I, it was also written by BBC and VOA and. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, nation, mm. just I, ca I can't remember the lines. Okay. So we were protesting that we need to be given uh, good food. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, no longer. I mean, personally, I mean, I, I just found it uh, too uh, injera and uh, shiro too much for me. I'm, I'm sick. I'm, uh, I have uh, COVID. I needed better food. So we needed. We we protested. Mm -hmm. We we need better food. Mm -hmm. We need to go to to be taken to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need regular testing. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who's uh, we? Who you and just all of the no, other I mean, cellmates? We, okay, we were about um, sixty of us who contracted. Mm, okay. And uh, yeah, Sostinia is big. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole of Sostinia would be around maybe around uh, I'd say 300, 400. Mm -hmm. Now sixty contracting COVID. That's that's a big it's quite significant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the stories nicked out and got to the international uh, uh, got into the international media mm -hmm. don't ask me how they got them but 
you know, it, um, it became big. So uh, everyone was focused on, hey, we have COVID. You know, you remember how, uh, how COVID was uh, th that time, just and the coverage of uh, COVID. So everyone focused on Sostinia, was on Sostinia, mm. how, hey, we have uh, incarcerated people who have uh, COVID and they're like 60 within like 300. Mm. That was a big story. Yeah, that's really significant. Yeah, so we protested. To get and that medical care yeah, and yeah. that attention. Although we were, <laughs> they, they came and they, you know, stopped the, the protests, we were beaten a bit, you know, but we continued the next day. And, and you know, after one day, yeah, the, everything changed, you know. Mm. We, uh, in the morning, we, we would have uh, uh, in Kulal and Dabo, and, uh, and I mean, the, the officer the, in charge would actually, the boss at Sosinia would actually come. I think he knew I was the one sneak, uh, leaking the stories mm -hmm. <laughs> to, the me, to, to the international media, and mm -hmm. he was like, hey, is, is the food okay? Uh, mm -hmm. What do you want? Mm -hmm. uh, tell, me, wh wh tell me what do you want, and I, I, would, I would joke around and tell him, I think next I want uh, Shakla tip. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see. So uh -huh. let, let, let's let's come to this 2009 okay. event uh -huh. because this is really what put you in the eye of the Oromo oh, Nation, yeah, exactly. and it was you know the first time you became known by the mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. um, and I think it was the beginning of your journey, uh, you know, with the struggle, the Oromo struggle, and the people. Mm -hmm. Why do the story? What compelled you? Okay. What still sticks with you uh -huh. about that experience? Okay, uh, I think the first. Uh, I would say, how did I come to know about uh, uh, Oromos? Mm. I, 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 I never knew about Oromo. When, when you're in Kenya or when you're Kenyan, um, we talk about Gabra and Borana, mm. and, and we, we don't know who Oromo. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's uh, most Kenyans don't know who Oromo uh, are. So the same words for me. Um, I, my mom used to work for for IOM. I'm sure many who are in the diaspora went through my, my mom's uh, mm -hmm. hands. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, Ethiopians and Oromos and Somalis and South Sudanese went through my mom's uh, uh, hands when they were immigrating mm -hmm. to, to third countries. Mm -hmm. She used to work for International Organization for Migration. Mm -hmm. So when I, one day I went to my mom's office and uh, you know I saw this uh, uh, Ethiopian and I think I'm a person who was uh, always good in geography and culture and getting to learn about people's culture and languages so I was like hey I, I was being kind and I greeted the guy in, in Amhari and the guy looked at me in a not very good way mm -hmm. and um, I came to learn later why, mm -hmm. why he wasn't. Mm -hmm. So this guy was Oromo. I see. Now I'm getting to know who the Oromo are. I see. Because if you ask any Kenyan, they, they don't know the difference. I see, I see. <laughs> so I was in the same boat. I was uh, um, in my third year in university and um, I used to go to Isli, Second Street. Those Oromos in the diaspora, uh, if you still remember Masjid Dawood, I know many of you used to uh, pray there at Masjid Dawood in Second Avenue. So opposite there, there was a guy called Clive. Uh, we are related. Mm -hmm. So this Clive was like, uh, he told me, hey, I'm, I'm just from resolving some issue from a Oromo family. And I, I was like, who are they? Who are these Oromo people mm. you always keep on talking about? So he explained it to me and told me, yeah, hey, Oromo, uh, uh, they are from Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and so I got to know about Oromo. Mm -hmm. I did my research about Oromo. Mm -hmm. So when I was um, when I started my work at NTV as a journalist, mm -hmm. my speciality was to cover the region. Mm -hmm. So the region would mean uh, do stories about refugees in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, Kenya had the largest. Uh, uh, refugee camp in the world mm -hmm. at, uh, at, at the dab. So my doing stories about refugees got me closer to, to Oromos. And then, then the Oromos would invite me and tell me, hey, we have, uh, for those in the diaspora, if you still remember, we have this meeting at uh, St. Teresa's, let's meet. They used to have an annual meeting at St. Teresa's. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in, in Italy. I got to know about them. Mm -hmm. uh, I got interested uh, uh, about the, their, their culture. I love their food. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just. This was, so this was your kind of introduction to, to, to the to people. The Roma, yeah. To the Roma. Yeah. Right, right. So how did I end up doing this documentary? Now, I am a, I am a regional uh, correspondent for NTV, so I do stories that um, of stories from uh, that relate to I mean uh, Ethiopians yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and and Somalis. I was approached by a leader of uh, OLF while I was at NTV. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was well known for covering Somalia mm -hmm. because I've covered the Somalia conflict for a long time, mm -hmm. more than uh, fifteen years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gone through a lot uh, covering Somalia. Uh, I've been bombed in Somalia. I've been kidnapped in Somalia. Uh, I've, I've covered Somalia more even uh, than uh, than Oromia and, and Ethiopia and Sudan. But this so is what I was triggered an the interest in 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 in, in, uh, in Somali affairs and Somali politics. Mm. And uh, everyone who knew me linked me or related uh, related my work to. To Somali affairs, so this was kind OLF of what triggered the interest. Uh, leaders, uh, was this you covering Somalia, uh -huh. this conflict zone at mm -hmm. the time? Mm -hmm. This is what kind of triggered the interest by the OLF to approach you and say exactly. you might be the right person exactly. to tell their exactly. story too. I, I didn't know OLF existed, mm -hmm. so so mm -hmm. I think. Um, and, and I, I was doing a series of uh, rebel groups mm -hmm. uh, in the region, mm -hmm. you see. And uh, already ONLF had uh, approached me mm -hmm. and uh, several rebel groups in Sudan mm -hmm. and uh, uh, rebel groups in, 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 in Somalia. So I was doing coverage of this. They would invite me in the time of uh, Islamic Courts Union that, you know, uh, Mobsized into what is Rashabab today. I think they invited me for like uh, for a week there when they took control of uh, of Mogadishu. Mm. So yeah, the, I think the OLF leadership had seen all these stories and 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 they they wanted to have somebody invited over me invited over to you know tell the people. I mean to tell the world what. Uh, and then you the struggle is, which I didn't know about their struggle. So I, I after the meeting that I had with the leader, um, yeah, I got to know more about uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Oromo. So mm -hmm. as a, as a journalist and as a filmmaker, this I found this would be an interesting story to do. I mean, something an untold story that mm -hmm. would be interesting to 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 cover and uh, do. So I went there as, yeah, as. Um, as a journalist who is interested to do story about the Oromo and let the world know about the struggle of the Oromo. When you met Hajj Alu, which was at the Oda Awards, uh, which year was that? Remind me. That would be, uh, would be two, two years ago. Two years? Uh, no, not two years not ago, not three years. Three years ago. It, would have been, uh, so it was 2020. Is it 2020? Yeah, yeah, when you were yeah. in the country last, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it might have been the t end of 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. He had actually asked you to do a follow-up story mm -hmm. on Falmatu, who was a fighter at the time you had done the story inside rebel territory mm -hmm. in 2009. Mm -hmm. And you had actually a close relationship uh, with Falmatu, mm -hmm. and she was from the same town mm -hmm. as uh, Hach Alo as well. Were you able to ever follow up on that? Or, or just tell me a little bit about what okay. that interaction now, was like. Uh, that's, what, that's why uh, when I, at the beginning I told you, I was doing a story, I was doing a documentary about um, me returning to, to Ethiopia after my ban. Yeah, so I'm really, what I'm really curious about, Yasin, is your relationship you know, with, with Falmatu or, mm. or is, is it? So this was, was, this was to be part of the, of the documentary. Mm. This was mm. to be part of the documentary. Mm. So I took a road trip mm. from, I thought it would be more interesting if I take a road trip from Nairobi all the way to Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. I think, I thought that would be more interesting. Then I do stopovers. So my first stopover was Sheshemane. I wanted to meet all the characters from the inside rebel territory mm. that
that I had uh, covered back then. Mm. I wanted to know, now that uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has taken over, he's come with changes, he's mm. invited them back, mm. what are their feelings? Mm. You know, so I was trying to cover that, to capture that, mm. you see? So I stopped at uh, an, uh, Shashamane and I met the ex-OLF uh, 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 rebel fighters, who some had even become policemen now. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing interviews on them, mm. asking them how's, how's, the, how's the situation, how do you find the, the new prime minister? There was so positivity uh, back then in Ethiopia mm. and everyone was embracing the new uh, administration. So I wanted, of course, it, was, uh, it came natural that I, I had to do a story about uh, Falmatu because Falmatu was one of the stars in main uh, characters in my in my my docu series the inside rebel territory i really wanted you know I, I, what i said would be the end of this i mean the, the climax of my my documentary this mm. return to ethiopia documentary would be me uh, meeting uh, falmatu mm. and her explaining to me just oh this is a it's an, it's 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 good now. We are talking with the government, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, here is my husband and my kid. Uh, meet them. Mm. How have you been? You know, mm. that would, that was it. And Falmatu is from Ambo, mm. uh, and uh, Achalu is also uh, a native of, of Ambo. Mm -hmm. So Achalu, Achalu's interest was uh, was triggered by a post that I posted some time back mm -hmm. uh, of the in, uh, on information that I got that Falmatu had been killed mm. by mm. Uh, uh, her comrades. So there was that interest and uh, he asked me, uh, uh, I, was, I was new to, to a child we had not met before, so well, I was uh, just at the Order Awards and uh, he, uh, uh, just somebody called me and uh, when I looked back it was him and he was like, hey, I know you. I'm like, uh, Somebody was trying to explain to me who, who he is. I had not known him for, but I, or, or, although his, his his song was was a hit, and you guys had even this, in Kenya. So he, yeah, he yeah, asked this me. Conversation. Yeah, yeah. So we, he asked me to like, we had to to move somewhere, and told him this. Uh, he really is concerned about what happened to Falmatu, mm. and uh, I told him I'm doing something about this. Mm. I'm trying to do a documentary about. Uh, mm. uh, um, the characters that I met, uh, that I had met in 2009, mm. and Falmato is. So I asked him if he could assist me with the contacts of uh, of the f of the family and, and and all that. He told me, uh, Yasin, I'm gonna help you, and but just go to the bottom and get to know why Falmato was killed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, who killed Falmato, and uh, I mean just the. And let me ask: Did you get mm. to have any other interactions with Haj Alu before um, he was assassinated? Uh, no, that was uh, that was a f uh, that, that was a, we used to talk on f on on on, on, phone. on on phone mm -hmm. and uh, as as I was following up on on my on uh, on my uh, documentary, yeah, we used to we, we used to talk much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that you want to say about this two thousand and nine venture before we come and we talk about uh, just last year your your project uh, on Eurasia in Oromia? The two thousand and nine. Yeah, anything else uh, about inside rebel territories? Okay, okay. Uh, still, I don't know. Um, inside rebel territory, okay, that really made a lot of uh, Oromos get to know me. Um, but um, most people don't uh, understand just how much I had to go through for that. Uh, hmm documentary to be aired mm. you know it was one of my worst periods in, in journalism it was it was a difficult moment for me and mm. um, back then I was still a young journalist mm. 2009 I wasn't uh, that experience but it, it took great um, courage for me to, to 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 do to finally do that you know the Ethiopian government had um, offered some um, amount of money. Mm -hmm. That would be, they had offered like 15 million 
بر نا نات بیر بات کنین شیل نا ها ماش دا تیز این دولارز 15 میلیون این دولارز دا دوری بار بات بات این دا افر دس مانی وای یا سو جس تو یو نو to make not let the documentary yeah, air yeah. at the time. Okay. That was the, the, the Zenawi government. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they had sent a, a Somali elder mm-hmm. to talk to me. Mm-hmm. I think they assumed I'm Somali or because maybe because I cover a lot of Somalis and uh, I don't know so Somali affairs and all that. But they they used a Somali elder who I respect much. Mm. So we had a talk and. Uh, you know, he told me uh, this is a request of the uh, Addis uh, government that you, you, you know, um, you drop that that documentary. But I, I, was, I, That's a I balanced it and I weighed it with the, you know, I weighed it with the interest of forty-five million or almost, and I was like, okay, that money is good. I would have, I would have been a rich man right now. I would. Uh, I would have had maybe 15 million. That would, I mean, that would get you like here so in Nairobi, uh, uh, prime areas. That would be like maybe four marshalnets in, yeah. in, in, a, in a prime area. Yeah. But I weighed it with the with the with the, or, or the interest of aromas, and I, I just decided, okay, let me let me respect the let let, let me let me let me give the world uh, the oromo story. Mm-hmm. I have goosebumps hearing mm-hmm. that. That's not a small piece of information, mm-hmm. I think, not just for me to consume, but I think our viewers, viewers as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as you said, you're a young journalist. That's a lot of money uh, to be offered for... Yeah, I mean, you, you were under no obligation, actually, mm-hmm. to do that. Um, mm-hmm. That was really you making a decision yeah, based have, on uh, ethics I mean, and, and, um, and more. I would have said the tips have been stolen or I lost the tips and, you know. Yeah, they're there. But, they're um, you know, I had, I weighed it with the 45 million or almost, and I was, I was like, I mean, when you, when the, the day will be buried, man. Don't go into the grave of guilty, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to do it. Powerful, mm-hmm. extremely powerful. So last year, 2022, mm-hmm. you were an organizer of the Eretia caravan that took members. Sorry, I'm actually still quite a bit overwhelmed by what you had just shared. Oh, um, but anyway, last year, you, are, you were an organizer of the Eretia caravan that took members of the settled Oromo community here back to Oromia um, for the Eretia celebrations. Uh, you are also looking at making a new process, actually, uh, in the final uh, stages of a process of making a documentary about this return of Kenyan Oromo communities to their uh, to their lands, their ancestral lands after generations. And actually, we're going to take a look uh, at a, a small look at some of the footage now, the trailer actually of that documentary. <laughs> Coming this June, the lost tribe of Oromo, the search for their origins. All my pilgrims embark on a journey of a lifetime. It's a tasking 2,000 kilometers from Tana River, Kenya to Finfine Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, tracing their forefathers. Will they make it to Africa's biggest cultural event, the Iracha Festival? to join their long lost kinsmen. It's a journey of self-searching and the search of this tribe's origins, breaking a 700 year separation with Ethiopia. Will the Oromo welcome their long lost Kenyan tribe Orma after seven centuries separation? Who are the Orma? Join me, Yasin Juma, as I follow the Orma pilgrims in the Irecha caravan, their experience of this journey, an exclusive into the rich Oromo culture, Eastern Africa's largest ethnic group. It's going very well. The highs. The lows, the emotions, and jubilation. This June on Yasin Juma TV YouTube channel. The lost tribe of Oromo, Orma to Oromia.
the epic journey. Yes, in, uh, tell us quickly, when will this documentary be available and where will people be able to watch it? Mm -hmm. Now, this documentary is going to be, it's going to run in my new um, YouTube channel, mm -hmm. Yasin Juma TV. Mm -hmm. Yasin Juma TV, so everyone... Follow. Like, subscribe. Uh, yeah, please, everyone, please just support me uh, this time round. Like, you've always supported me and go to subscribe because I need more subscribers before I, I, I launch it. But I'm going to launch it as, as the promo says, I'm going to launch it uh, in June. Okay. But I, between now and then, um, I need time for uh, the Oromo people in the diaspora in Africa to subscribe yep, and yep. let other people know that what's going on. I, I, I mean, I need as much people as possible to watch it, yep. but it's going to run on my Yasin Juma TV channel. Great, thank you for that. Now tell me, Yasin, what was the experience of seeing these communities reconnect with Eritrea? I, I, I always wanted, this is what, like I told you, my interest has always been about uh, anthropology and culture much uh, more than conflict. So I had, I always wanted, uh, me being a Kenyan and w uh, seeing this uh, uh, Orma people, mm -hmm. I've, I've interacted with Orma people, but I never connected them with the Oromo people. Mm -hmm. Because in Kenya, we actually have, uh, I actually started an, uh, a campaign to, for the Kenya government education systems to stop using the word um, gala in our, in our textbooks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Orma were in Kenya referred to as the Gala people. They've always been uh, referred to as the Gala people. And uh, I was interested in their history. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they were very influential uh, 700 years ag ago mm -hmm. in the coast. Mm -hmm. They actually took control of Somalia, the whole of Somalia and uh, northern coast of Kenya. But they were subdued and settled where they are very far away from, like 2,000 kilometers away from, yeah. from, from Oromia. So it's, it's a question that, why, why do we have these uh, Oromo people secluded at this uh, uh, part of Kenya in, in, in Tana River? So those questions are, are That's what you, those are the questions you're trying to answer through yeah, this process. Yeah, yeah. So and who are these Oromo people, basically, that have they, do, do they, uh, how, how much are they connected to? Then I found out that they're not, much connected to the Oromia people, and uh, you know, I jumped into this uh, um, uh, this project, and I thought uh, that would be good. It's yeah. something that even the Prime Minister Abi was interested in. So I think somebody from his office had also asked me if I could do mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, a project about uh, the Oromia people and the Iraqi people, Iraqi people in in, in Tanzania who are also Kushites, the mm -hmm. southernmost Kushites. Mm -hmm. So you know, this this was history covering uh, these people for the first time, it's historic, you know, covering them, going back to where their ancestors came mm -hmm. is something that is big. I thought, no, I have to be part of this uh, uh, project. So and I did, I did uh, the coverage and I did the documentary. About yeah, and it looked like quite an emotional journey, an yeah, emotional is, process for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, on the road, just quickly tell us about this because uh, I found it quite fascinating when you shared the information with me. Mm -hmm. On the road, you were received by a ceremony, uh, if I understand correctly, Hin uh, Oromsi's demo, Si Oromsi san, or they made, they, you were given a, a, a position in, in a clan, I think it was in Shashamanne. Mm -hmm. uh, was this on this particular journey as you were making your way no, in? No, 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 this was back when I was returning to Ethiopia for the first time. For the first time. Uh, is when I was, uh, when, um, you know, uh, I'd, 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 I'd give a shout out to, to Shashamanne people. That, uh, I mean, their reception and hospitality is, is up there. So, okay. for my for my uh, for my case, when I was going back to, to um, when I was going back to, to Ethiopia for the first time, and 
the RC Association Youth they they, they organized something mm -hmm. you know to, to, to make me part of the part of the um, uh, of the of the Oromo tribe. Mm -hmm. So I think um, yeah. Um, That's powerful. It, it, it was actually a ritual that I had to, <laughs> you had to go go through, go through and I, th I felt honored to, to. And the same thing happened to the Orma people who were uh, traveling mm -hmm. for the first time. When they reached, um, um, when they reached Shashamane, I think you can see in the footage, uh, the uh, the Shashamane, the RC women were with with the sinker, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and, and and the Kenyans would pass through mm -hmm. in between them. That that was a, I I quite I quite uh, I've forgotten the name of the ritual, but that ritual was done to mm -hmm. welcome them back to 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 Oromia after seven hundred uh, years of uh, you know separation with their ancestral land, mm -hmm. and it was very powerful and very emotional for the Kenyans when uh, they were you know. Uh, invited that way in yeah, Shashamani. Yeah. Yeah, As that, you say, that, that, would, that was one of the climaxes of, of this documentary. Incredible. Mm. It's, it's, it's very powerful. And as you say, it's quite historic, really, in the history of uh, relations between not just uh, these two nations, but these two people groups who have been you know, divided and split by you know, the modern day invention uh, of borders and the like. Mm. Um, as we come to the very end of our interview, you have something quite exciting coming up, uh, yes, in other than this documentary, which yeah. again, uh, we really uh, express to our audience mm -hmm. to like, to subscribe, mm -hmm. to follow the channel. Links will be available on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. The trailer will be available, so share it. Um, uh, I want to mm -hmm. know you are climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. actually in a few days. So we were hustling to even get this interview uh, uh -huh. done in time before you go. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. And there is, some, there is some significance uh, to this climb, you know, mm -hmm. from a kind of a social humanity perspective. Mm -hmm. um, describe that to our audience. Okay, the, uh, so we are coming. We are climbing uh, Kilimanjaro to mark the Africa Day, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and also the Africa Union uh, 60 years uh, uh, celebration. But um, we are give, we are taking it as a challenge to uh, Africa youth mm -hmm. that uh, we have challenges. There. We have conflicts. We have. Um, we have uh, drought, uh, famine, and, and all that. But we, we can face these challenges as Africans, you know. And um, I'm a strong believer of Pan-Africanism and also uh, a strong believer of, uh, you know, Africans resolving their own uh, African problems. Mm. So this is part of, of, of us youth. Uh, giving ourselves challenges, uh, ch challenging ourselves to, you know, climb the highest uh, mountain in, in Africa to achieve that. If you mm. can achieve that, then the whole of Africa can achieve uh, an Africa that uh, an Africa that we want. So basically, it's it's about it's um, each country brings. Uh, we have uh, 50, 54 countries in Africa. And each country brings two participants with a flag and all that. But I'll, I'll also be carrying the the Abagada f flag because uh, <laughs> I, I, I have because to you be belong you belong to you yeah you belong yeah, to two yeah. nations now. So I have now. the Kenya Kenya flag and the Abagada f flag. Yeah, so that Beautiful. is uh, the, that Beautiful. that is uh, yeah. So we are taking it up to Uhuru Peak mm -hmm. and uh, you're letting know Africans that you know we can resolve uh, our own problems. I mean, you see what's happening in Ethiopia now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Tigray war. As as uh, as ended because of Africans talking to themselves. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, we see what's going on in in, in Arusha with the uh, with the uh, Ola and mm. uh, the Ethiopian government. Mm. That's the Africa we want. Yeah. Yes, and good luck on mm -hmm. that venture to yeah. you and everybody else who's participating. Mm -hmm. Thank you sincerely and deeply, not just for your time today mm -hmm. and sharing your insights and your stories and being very vulnerable uh, mm -hmm. with us, but really thank you for your commitment uh, to a cause uh, for justice, really, uh, mm -hmm. overall, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this sentiment of gratitude is shared by our audience. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Galatome. Galatome, <laughs> <laughs>